In this tutorial, we are going to use the halftone effect in Adobe Illustrator. The halftone effect can also be created in Adobe Photoshop, which I have covered in a previous video, link in the description. But today, we are going to look at how to use the halftone effect in Illustrator. And as an exercise to demonstrate the tool, we are going to be creating this piece of artwork here on the right. And we're going to create this piece of artwork from the image here to the left. So what do we have here? Let's quickly zoom in. So we have our halftone effect applied to the face and we have a series of colored circles here just to add to the aesthetic. And I will be discussing exactly how to create this effect from a bitmap image. Now, before I go straight into how to use the halftone effect, I want to quickly discuss what exactly the halftone effect is for those of you that are not familiar with it. I am going to talk for a couple of minutes on this, so if you wish to skip ahead and skip this overview and go straight to how to use the tool, go ahead and skip on the timeline now. Right, so what is the halftone effect? Well, halftone is the reprographic technique that simulates continuous tone imagery through the use of dots varying either in size, in shape, or in spacing. Let's take a look at a couple of examples I have for you to look at. Let's jump over into Photoshop. If you can't see these images that well on screen, well, you can download them. All the links are in the description. So the halftone works by creating an illusion of a grayscale image, but in fact only uses one color. This first example has been prepared in Photoshop earlier, and this is the effect you can achieve in Photoshop. You can see to the left, the image appears to have various shades of gray, but if we look closely at the blown up area to the right, we can see that this is the composition of dots that create the image. The use of white space and the distance of the dots make it look like the image consists of various shades of gray. It's all rather clever. And you might recognize the effect. This is used a lot in newspapers. Now, I have another example here. Let's just click on the next image. Again, the blown up area to the right, showing more detail of the halftone effect. This is a photo of something I saw out and about in an advertisement. It caught my eye because I was instantly aware that this effect could be created in Adobe Illustrator. So I thought I would share this with you and create a video on how to go about creating something like this. So how are we going to create this effect in Adobe Illustrator? Okay, well for this, you're going to need a few panels to help you. You're going to need your layers. You're going to need your appearance. You will need the swatches panel, the gradient panel, and the transparency panel. If you don't see these, you can just simply come up to Window and drop on the menu and check them there. Okay, I'm going to do a quick demonstration to introduce the principles of the halftone effect before I apply it to the photo image, just so we understand it. So, I'm going to start by creating a new document. I'm going to press Command N for short. And I'm just going to make it really simple. Let's just go with the A4 size canvas. It's not really that important right now. Just click OK. And I'm just going to zoom in slightly. And I'm going to start by creating a ellipse, a simple ellipse. I'm just going to click and drag. But I'm going to press Shift on the keyboard. And by pressing Shift, I'll be able to create a nice, a nice solid scale circle there. And if I press V on the keyboard, that will bring up my selection tool and enable me to drag it around. Okay, so remember we brought up our gradient panel earlier on. Now with the circle selected, I'm just going to come over to my gradient panel and just click in the gradient effect. And by doing so, we can see we have a nice gradient going from the right to left, black to white. But I don't want the stroke. I want to get rid of that, so I'm going to come over to my menu, come down to the bottom, and I'm going to select my foreground, my foreground color, and just select transparent from the color bar there. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now, I have the gradient going from right to left, but I want this to go from the middle out. So with the object selected, let's come over to my gradient panel. I'm just going to select this menu bar 
from the top right and click radio. So now we have it working just as we like, but I want to change it around. I want the black to be in the middle and the white to be on the outside. So again, let's come to our gradient panel and we can see here we have our two colors. Just to make it quick, I'm just going to grab my black, slide to the left and just grab my white and slide it over. That's a quick fix. And here we have our gradient ellipse. So why am I doing this? Well, I'm using this as an example because I want to create an object that has an obvious gradient from black to white. And you'll see what I mean just in a second. Okay, so now it's time to apply the effect. With the object selected, I'm going to come to Effect, scroll down to Pixelate, and select Color Halftone. And when you do this, you will have a menu that comes up and we'll be able to change things such as maximum radius and the screen angle in degrees, channel one to four, etc. We don't have to worry about that for now. We are just going to go with our maximum radius as eight and click OK. And there you see the halftone effect has been applied. Now I'm going to quickly duplicate this image, show you another example by pressing Alt and holding Alt on the keyboard if I click the object and drag it to the right, I'll be able to quickly duplicate the object. I'm just going to move this into the center so we can see a little bit more clearly. So we have two objects here. I'm just going to click on my new object and come across to my appearance panel and we can see that we have the effect here ready to edit. If I click on this, we can change the maximum radius to about, let's go for 12 this time, and click OK. And we can see that changing the maximum radius of the dots, we will have a different effect. Now I'm going to duplicate this again because I want to show you another effect or another feature of this. So again, pressing Alt, clicking on the object and dragging to the right, we can duplicate that image. Let's just drag this over a little bit. But this time, with the object selected, I'm going to come again to my halftone, but see where we had our screen angles, where we could change those. I'm going to come to channel 4 and just change this to 90 and click OK. And now we can see that we have the same effect, but the degrees or the angle in which the circles are spanning out has changed. So let's just come back into Photoshop. And you remember that example I showed you earlier on? Well, it seems to me that they might have also used this effect. So if I come back into Illustrator, we can see that they must have used a 90 degree effect on their halftone. So you can see we have created three very different halftone effects from a single gradient black and white object. Now, what if we had a black and white photo and used the halftone effect on that? Well, that's exactly what we are going to do next. So I'm going to come back to my original document and we're going to create this halftone effect from this photo here. Okay, so the next step is all about preparation. We are going to make this image into black and white. To do this, I'm going to need to use Photoshop. So I'm going to click the image. I'm going to press Command C to copy. And let's come back into Photoshop. And I'm going to create myself a new document by pressing Command N. Now I'm going to select international paper. And for this, I'm going to create a rather large image. The bigger the image, the better your effect. So I'm going to create a A3 image. Uh, canvas size and I'm going to just make the resolution 150 and I'm going to press command V and I'm just going to paste it in as a smart object that's okay for now and that is looking just fine I'm going to press enter and now I'm going to come to image mode and grayscale and I'm just going to rasterize that that's fine and I can flatten the object it doesn't matter that's okay Right, now I need to create more contrast between the shades of grey, white and black. So I'm going to use the Levels tool in Photoshop. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on. I'm going to come to Image, uh, Adjustments and Levels. And with this menu bar you will see we have three um, properties we can toggle here. 
So I'm just going to move these around a little. Bring this one on the far left up to increase my black. And let's create a bit more contrast there. And you can pretty much toggle this until you get to an effect you are happy with. Let's just keep moving this around. I'm going to try, I'm going to go for this. Okay. Now the magic and the interesting thing about this is that depending on your contrast, you will get a various different halftone effect. So it's going to take a little bit of playing around with. But I'm just going to go with this. So with that done, I'm going to press Command A to select all. And I press Command C to copy. And I'm going to come back into Illustrator and I'm going to create a new document. Command N. And we need to make a A3 document just the same. We're going to make sure it's portrait and click OK. And again, Command V to paste. And there it is. There is our image. And we are ready to apply the halftone effect. So make sure you have your image selected. We're going to come up to Effect, come down to Pixelate, come across to Color Halftone and click once. And again, we have our menu here. And I'm going to go for the maximum radius of 12 and click OK. And boom, there it is. So let's zoom in and have a look at that. It's looking quite interesting. And if we make sure the object is selected and we come over to our half tone, we can toggle the maximum radius. Let's try this time. Let's try 20 this time. And we can see that we, we achieve various different results. So let's go back to 12 because I quite like that one. You could kind of make out the, the face still, but still got that really interesting half tone effect there. And that's it really. That is how you use the halftone effect in Adobe Illustrator. But I'm just going to go quickly off topic and show you something else because you might be wondering, I have this halftone effect image and it looks really nice in black and white, but what if I want whatever's black to be, say, red or yellow if I want to create another, add some colour into it? Well, let me quickly show you how. So now I'm just going to scroll over here a second. By pressing V, I can select my object. I'm going to duplicate this quickly. By pressing Alt, I'm going to click and drag to the left. I'm going to duplicate this object. Now, I need to rasterize this image first because I'm going to use the live trace. So I'm going to put the object selected. I'm going to come up to Object, come down to Rasterize, and just click OK. That's going to rasterize that quickly. Then I'm going to use the Live Trace tool. Now you can find the Live Trace tool up in the top menu here. Here it is. I'm going to click that once and just click OK. And that's going to process that for me. And there you go. Now, um, first of all, I'm going to, with the object selected, I'm just going to come to the minimum area and push that down to zero. That will make it as close to the original object as possible. And once we've done that, I'm going to click expand. And now you see we it has created that into a vector object. So now I'm going to right click and ungroup and group those and I'm going to come over to my menu and select the magic wand tool and just click on the white area and press delete. Now I'm going to press V and I can select my black areas. Let's zoom out slightly. And I'm just going to select all the black and if I change, come over to my menu, scroll down I can see I can change my black color, my fill color, and let's change that to purple or pink. Click off, and you can see what's happened there. You can see that now we can change all the colors and do all sorts of interesting things. For example, I might want to select all of this. Let's just go back to that pink. And let's say we give a stroke color. Let's try yellow. 
you can see you can get some really funky results. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Now I'm going to come back to my original document and you can see here we've got a slightly different effect there. That would have been because I had a different level of contrast in my original black and white image. But anyway, you can see I've got some colored circles here and you might be wondering how I did this. So I'm just going to show you how. So I'm going to come back into my document here and just come back to my black and white image. Tell you what I can do. I can get rid of that for now. Don't need that anymore. And let's come in. So now all we could do, it's really simple. We're going to come to our menu and grab the ellipse tool. And we're just going to draw an ellipse, pressing shift and holding shift to get a nice solid circle. So we've got an ellipse there. And I'm just going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times by pressing alt on the keyboard. I can just move these around. And by clicking on each object, I can change the scale of them and just move them around until I have something that looks like this. Now I've just spent the last five minutes duplicating all my ellipses and just positioning them and resizing them into something I'm happy with. Okay, but now I've got all these ellipses, it's just a simple case of wandering around and just changing the colors as I see fit. Make sure that you have your foreground color selected, otherwise you might end up changing the stroke like I just did there. So with my main color selected, I'm just going to go around and change some various colors. I'm going to do this again until I have something that looks like this. So with all the colors now changed, I'm going to select them all and I change the multiply blending mode. Now to do that, I'm going to just come off and I could select them one by one, but I'm just going to select and drag over all of them. And by doing that, you've also selected your woman face in the background. So I'm just going to press and hold shift and click that to deselect it. So now I only have the ellipses selected. Okay. With all of them selected, I'm going to come down to my transparency panel and you'll see there's a little option here on the top left. I'm going to select down and change my blending mode to multiply. And as soon as I do that, it will show you all the black underneath. And also you'll get these really interesting color overlays on the circles too. So there you have it. That is how we use the halftone effect in Adobe Illustrator. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, and I hope it inspires you to find ways to use this effect in your digital artwork. If you wish to hear about more up-and-coming video tutorials and general creative news and updates, you can follow me on Twitter. If you liked the tutorial, go ahead and click the like button on my Facebook fan page and even add me as a friend. And, of course, check out and subscribe for free to the tastedshoots.com website. All links are on the channel sidebar or in the description. And last but not least, if you have not already, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Well, that is it for another video brought to you by tastedshoots.com. Have fun, guys, and I will see you next time.